Part 2. Reality. The Neurological Experience. Welcome to Earth. Population, 6.2 billion. Humans, that is. There is no telling how many millions of species of various creatures there are living on the Earth, in the ocean, in the air, and in the Earth itself. Not to mention the fact that the Earth is a living thing, just as all planets are along with stars, comets, and some moons. We are all existing here in this dimension playing the video game of life. In the other dimension, we exist as souls, but each, of, each one of us decided to play the reality video game, and we chose to take on the shape of a human body to experience a neurological experience of pleasure and pain. Others may have decided to engage in the simulation as dogs or cats, I'll see you in another lifetime when we are both cats or other beings. It is all a simple choice that we make in a different dimension. This is all for experiencing, and we place our own subjective judgments on things as good or bad. There are many fun rules called natural laws of this game, things like gravity, friction, conservation of energy, conservation of mass, thermodynamics, relativity, and the ever mysterious quantum mechanics. There is special magic that can be harnessed, like electromagnetics, and energy itself. The playing field is Earth and the solar system, in the Milky Way, galaxy, and in the universe. Over 34 years ago, we passed a great stage in this game by landing humans on the moon. Of course, there are reports that secret human groups have been not only space traveling, but also time traveling. But those are just some advanced gamers. But this presentation is focused on the achievements of the known gamers. The objective to this game is to survive. This objective hasn't changed for thousands of years. It has been the same game, just with updated graphics, and updated gameplay, and updated levels, updated arenas, with updated enemies, and updated methods of earning points. The human has been enhanced, but for some reason still seeks to destroy other humans. Since the dawn of man, he has thrown rocks at each other, then spears, then swords, then catapults and cannons, then guns, then bombs, then nuclear bombs, and now with chemical weapons. But somehow he still survives and exists in such numerous forms now, more than ever. So to play this game, you choose your character, and each character has an entire background story and destiny to fulfill to them with pros and cons along the way. We purchase a rental on these bodies in another dimension, and I'll show you how. In real life, as soon as we are born, we get a receipt known as a birth certificate, and each human is branded and barcoded with a serial code known as a social security number. You are leasing that human body, and it must be returned, and that's why when people die, they leave the human body behind and everything else they accumulate on the planet. You even have to have someone sign your body out for you, and that is known as a death certificate. Nothing belongs to you, and that is why we create the funny notion of ownership. If you really owned anything, wouldn't you be allowed to take it with you? The only thing you get to keep is knowledge and experiential memories. It's the same way with dreaming. You can win the lottery in your dreams, but you can't take that money with you into the quote, real world. In elementary school, the teachers are there to help design your individual character that you are role playing as. You build a storyline to that character by identifying your country of origin, your ethnicity, your religion, and make decisions on what you want to be when you grow up. These occupations are preset things put into the system by some of the original designers. You could be such things as doctors, teachers, lawyers, businessmen, as well as many other occupations. You are these occupations so you could earn money so you could buy things that you cannot take with you after you finish playing the game. For some reason, people really enjoy this pursuit of wealth by any means. They also really seem to like killing and torturing each other, which I already mentioned. In school, we also have our behaviors engineered to be patient and sit down in rooms for over an hour of time watching one person talk to us, usually telling fairy tales known as history. Then they ring a bell and we all exit the classroom in an orderly fashion and proceed to our next destination where we sit down for another hour, hour and a half, listening to another teacher give us an inaccurate version of reality. This all prepares us for a lifetime of waiting in line, be it in traffic, at government institutions, hospitals, or other things. And it also trains us to accept the nightly news version of reality and encourage us to watch the news and 
read the newspaper because those things are accurate sources of information and, of course, help sell an audience share to advertisers. There was a major upgrade to the video game last century. When the car and the telephone were invented, the designers paved the entire planet with roads and communication wires, and then those thousands of wondrous spy and communication satellites that roam in our planet's orbit. Of course, humans aren't allowed to leave our planet. Only astronauts and cosmonauts are. There are rules against going to space, and there are actually laws against interacting with extraterrestrials. Another part of the game is the charade of acting like this is all real. Humans get very annoyed when some humans acknowledge the reality that this is just a video game. Nobody likes to hear that, and they demand that it is real because our nerves and limited five senses tell us it is real. However, we all deep down know it's not. All it takes is a simple look around and we can see it's just a very fun, fun video game that seems really real. But let's see here. If we look up, we can see the power supply, which we call the sun. We actually can't look directly at it, but we all can see it. See that it's a flaming ball of nuclear explosions of hydrogen fusing into helium constantly at all times, releasing enough energy in one day to power our planet for 27 years, but we choose to burn up the remains of gamers who lived before our time known as fossil fuels. The sun taunts us to use its wonderful energy daily by turning our skin colors and making us wear sunglasses. Someday we will heed its advice and finally utilize its wondrous energy and get over our greed of charging for energy and the laziness of polluting the air. The designers have us thinking that life is a series of stages or phases of going to school, graduating, maybe going to college, getting married for the rest of your life, getting a job, working 40 years, having kids, watching them repeat the same process, retiring, watching them raise their kids, and the cycle continuing. Some people love the idea of continuing the cycle. Others want to break free from the cycle. The stage of aging no longer needs to occur though, now that humans have broken the source code of reality programming known as DNA. No longer does disease or pain or suffering or any negative things need to occur anymore now that we can engineer our own bodies. Unfortunately, the medical industry wants to maintain the relevance so we won't offer these discoveries to the mass population and people will continue to age and die and suffer. If all the weapons of the world could be cashed in, it would be enough money for every human to be a millionaire. But that would defeat the whole purpose of money now, wouldn't it? There have been many different versions of man. Some were genetically altered by aliens and extraterrestrials. Some came from other planets. Some evolved from monkeys. And others, well, are just a mystery. We have watched Microsoft Windows evolve over the past 10 years. But just like life, it's the same operating system just with updated graphical user interfaces and features. So just take a look around, look in the sky, look at that blue sky, look at the trees, look at the grass that surrounds you and is always looking at you, and all the life that just exists everywhere. The air that we breathe, that you could feel but you can't see it. And just question all that you have presented as reality. As Yoda said, forget all that you have learned to be true when learning the ways of the force. This has been a presentation of the Melanesance Movement.